chemical fertilizers promise fast growth, but they quietly drain life from your soil. There is a reason gardens fed only with chemicals demand more inputs every season while still producing less flavor, weaker plants, and rising costs. The truth most gardeners are never told is that plants do not eat fertilizers. Soil life does. And when soil life thrives, plants grow harder, faster, and healthier than any chemical program can ever achieve. Today, I want to walk you through a carbon-rich ferment that rebuilds soil biology so effectively that many growers never return to chemical fertilizers again. This guide is created specifically for the Growth Hub Central Crops community, for gardeners who want long-term fertility, resilience and real independence. All right, so let's get straight into the method, the science behind it and, well, the exact measurements you'll need so you can replicate it without any guesswork. Now, why is carbon the missing key in modern gardens? You know, healthy soil isn't just brown dirt. It's actually a living system that's powered by carbon. Carbon feeds beneficial bacteria, fungi, protozoa and earthworms, which then convert minerals into nutrition that plants can actually use. When chemical fertilizers are applied, Plants might get a short burst of nutrients, but unfortunately, soil organisms end up starving. Over time, the organic matter just collapses, water retention drops, and your crops become, well, dependent on constant feeding. A carbon-rich ferment reverses this damage by delivering soluble carbon, beneficial microbes and organic acids directly into the soil. Instead of forcing growth, it activates biological processes that keep working long after application. This is why, honestly, a single ferment can outperform repeated chemical feeding over an entire season. So, what this carbon-rich ferment actually is? This ferment is a biologically active liquid made by fermenting mature compost, charcoal powder, and a natural sugar source in water. During fermentation, microbes multiply rapidly, organic acids unlock nutrients, and carbon becomes bioavailable. When applied to soil, the solution inoculates the root zone with life while feeding existing organisms. The inclusion of charcoal is critical. Charcoal acts as a carbon sponge, absorbing nutrients and microbes, then releasing them slowly over time. This transforms the ferment from a short-term boost into a long-lasting soil amendment. So, here's the exact ferment formula and measurements you'll need. To make one batch that's just right for a medium-sized garden, you'll need 10 litres of clean, non-chlorinated water. And if you're using tap water, just let it sit uncovered for about 24 hours so the chlorine can dissipate. Next, add one kilogram of well-finished compost. This compost should be mature, dark, and have that good earthy smell, not fresh or hot. The compost is what provides the microbial foundation for your mixture. Now add 200 grams of finely crushed charcoal. Make sure the charcoal is plain, untreated and crushed down to small granules or even powder for the maximum surface area. This step is really important for a balanced mix. 
Now, go ahead and add about 200 milliliters of unsulfured molasses or raw sugar syrup. This is, you know, the microbial fuel that really drives fermentation and provides carbon availability for the whole process. Next, stir the mixture thoroughly until everything is, well, evenly suspended. After that, cover the container loosely so gases can escape and place it in a warm, shaded area. Let the ferment brew for about seven to ten days. Be sure to stir it once daily to oxygenate and distribute those microbes. You should notice a slightly sweet, earthy smell. That means fermentation is going well. But if you catch a rotten smell, it means the mixture has gone anaerobic and, unfortunately, should be discarded. For application, you'll want to dilute one litre of the ferment into ten litres of water. This kind of dilution, you know, protects the roots while making sure you get even coverage across the soil. So, here's how this ferment actually replaces chemical fertilisers. See, chemical fertilisers mostly deliver isolated nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. But this ferment, well, it delivers a whole biological engine. Once you introduce these microbes to the soil, they get right to work cycling nutrients that are already present in the ground. They release minerals that were locked up, improve how roots access those nutrients, and they even help stabilize nitrogen naturally. The charcoal component, you know, stores excess nutrients and prevents leaching. And, well, the organic acids produced during fermentation increase nutrient solubility. Together, these processes create a self-feeding soil system. Plants grow steadily, not explosively, with stronger cell walls, deeper roots, and improved resistance to pests and disease. Many gardeners notice a reduced need for additional feeding after just two applications. Over time, yields stabilize, soil texture improves, and watering needs decrease because carbon increases moisture retention. When and how to apply for best results. Apply the diluted ferment directly to soil, not leaves. The goal is to feed the root zone and microbial community. Early morning or late evening application protects microbes from UV exposure. For vegetable gardens, you'll want to apply once every two weeks during active growth. And for fruit trees and perennial beds, go ahead and apply once every four weeks. If you're dealing with depleted or compacted soils, an initial weekly application for the first month can uh, really help to rapidly restore biology. Always water the soil lightly before application if it is dry. Moist soil, you know, allows microbes to establish quickly and move into the root zone. So, what changes will you notice in your garden? Well, within the first couple of weeks, the soil becomes darker and a bit more crumbly. You'll also see that earthworm activity increases. Plus, plants start showing stronger stem growth and richer leaf colour, but without that excessive softness. Flowering becomes more consistent, and fruit set improves because, you know, the plants are no longer under nutrient stress. Over the long term, gardeners report fewer pest outbreaks since balanced nutrition really strengthens plant immune responses. Diseases that are linked to poor soil health just tend to decline naturally. So, 
the garden begins to regulate itself. Now, this right here is the difference between feeding plants and feeding soil. Let me tell you why this method is sustainable and cost-effective. Once you understand this ferment, your inputs really become minimal. Compost can easily be produced right at home. Charcoal, well, that can be made from clean biomass. And sugar sources, they're pretty inexpensive compared to synthetic fertilizers. More importantly, the soil improves every season instead of degrading. You know, chemical fertilizers create dependency. But carbon-based ferments create independence. There are, you know, some common mistakes to avoid. Never use fresh manure or unfinished compost, as this can introduce harmful pathogens and, well, excess ammonia. Also, avoid airtight containers during fermentation. Do not apply undiluted ferment directly to roots. And never ever combine this ferment with chemical fertilizers, which can kill microbial life. Just a few final thoughts for the Growth Hub Central Crops community. Gardening success isn't about stronger chemicals. It's really about smarter biology. This carbon-rich ferment honestly shifts your garden from an input-driven system to a living ecosystem that feeds itself. Once you see the results, chemical fertilizers will feel unnecessary and, well, pretty outdated. If this guide helped you rethink how you feed your soil, go ahead and support the Growth Hub Central Crops YouTube channel by subscribing, sharing this with fellow gardeners, and applying what you learned today. Healthy soil changes everything, and now you have the knowledge to build it for life.